This fall, I got the opportunity to revisit my old graduate school stomping grounds and talk to a couple of my colleagues about how we measure the brains of little kids. Amanda and Kelly share a few different neuroimaging techniques that we use to measure the timing and location of what's happening in the brain. So today we're gonna to learn a little bit about how we study kids' brains. So there are a couple of different methods that uh, developmental researchers use when they are um, trying to do research about how kids' brains work. Uh, and the first one we're gonna learn about is EEG, which stands for electroencephalogram. Yay! So this is where you put like this cap looking thing on infants and kids' heads. And I'll let Amanda share a little bit more. So this is an EEG cap. And so what it is, is it's a net of a bunch of different sensors. So all of the circular parts on here are sensors that can record the electrical activity in the brain. And you wear it over your head, just like a swim cap. And it actually feels pretty similar to a swim cap. So what we do with this net is before we put it on your head, we soak it in a special solution of water, plus some electrolyte and a little bit of baby shampoo, because the entire inside of the net is made out of sponges. So the sponges are the part that are actually touching your scalp, and soaking it makes them nice and soft, and it also makes it so it's able to conduct the brain's electrical signal. So as I mentioned, you wear the net over your head like a swim cap, and it looks pretty silly. This one is sized for a preschooler, so I'm not gonna shove it onto my head right now. <laughs> um, but my pinkies are out where your eyes would be. My thumbs are at the back of the head, and then you can kind of see through the side of my hand, there's a little bit of a hole, and that's actually a hole for your ear. So it does come down so that the sensors cover all the different places on your scalp. Um, that's really cool because we're able to use then those sensors to record 128 different locations of electrical activity in your brain. And so what we have kids do while they're wearing the net is we have them play special computer games that are designed to test different skills. Um, so for example, attention or learning or memory. And we record the electrical activity that is generated by the brain that we can measure from these sensors that are at the scalp. And then what we can do is we can average together electrical activity made by your brain for certain parts of the computer game. So for example, for a chunk of the computer game where your job is supposed to be to remember something, and we can look at how the electrical activity in your brain um, is different when you're remembering something versus when you have forgotten one of the items, for example. And so that, that average of all the electrical um, signal is called an ERP, an event-related potential. And so this is a great technique to study children's brain development because we can do it with babies. There's little baby versions of this cap. Um, we have to like blow bubbles and entertain babies when we put these on, but they will wear them sometimes. We can do it with kids and we can also do it with adults. Um, it's completely non-invasive since it's sitting right on the surface of your scalp and it doesn't hurt, doesn't itch, your head just feels a little bit wet and it gives us really great precise information about the timing of how things are processed in your brain. So then we moved on to another technique we use to study the brain. So I'm here today to show you some more cool stuff about how we study kids' brains uh, and so we're going to be checking this thing out. It's not a real MRI, otherwise I couldn't have the camera in here, but it is uh, a pretend MRI that we use sometimes to get kids used to having an MRI before they go over and get a real one. This is an MRI machine, as Sarah mentioned, although it is a practice one. It is made out of wood, basically like a prop for a play. So what is MRI? MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, and it's this really cool way that we can take pictures of the inside of the body by taking advantage of the fact that the water molecules in your body are sensitive to changes in a magnetic field. And so that makes MRI really cool because unlike an x-ray, which has radiation, MRI does not have radiation. And so you can actually have as many MRIs as you want to in your lifetime or in a day if you wanted to. Um, there's no known limit on them. As far as we know, they are completely safe. Um, and so that makes MRI a great way to study brain development in children um, because we can actually do MRIs like EEG with infants, with preschoolers, with adolescents, and with adults to study the brain. So there are three main types of images we can get from the brain using MRI that tell us about how the brain is developing in children. The first kind is called a structural MRI image and it tells us about the structure of the brain. So we can actually see the brain's gray matter and white matter, the neurons and the connections that are running back and forth between the neurons in the brain. The second type of special image that we get from MRI is called functional MRI images, fMRI, you may have heard of it before. 
Um, it's the one you see show up with glowing blobs on brains in the newspaper. And it tells us about how different parts of the brain are functioning or are working hard when you're trying to do some type of cognitive task. So if you're doing an fMRI study, that means we've designed some type of special computer game that's designed to measure something like attention or learning or memory. And we're looking at how the brain responds and what parts of the brain are being used. And the third type of MRI image we get tells us a lot about the connections of the brain. So where are there are major pathways in the brain, um, what parts of the brain tend to be active at the same time together, and again, how could this change over development? MRI has been used to study children's brains for many years, but more recently researchers have begun to use MRI to study the brains of infants as well. So researchers have developed a lot of techniques to use with infants. So initially, when we have infants come into the lab, we give their parents sounds of MRIs to listen to. But one of the really difficult things about MRI is it's really noisy, um, and we need infants and anyone to stay really still while doing this. And so the parents are in instructed to go home and play these loud beeping sounds to get infants used to this. But then when we bring infants into the lab, we give them two kinds of ear protection because we want to make sure that we're safe and protecting their hearing. So they have little um, earplugs that we put in and then we also put in big headphones over their head to protect their ears. And so when we get them to fall asleep and we get them in the scanner, we're able to take really beautiful pictures of their brain while they're asleep. We always have someone in the room at, at all times that's with the baby that can um, tell when the baby's awake, if they're kicking, and if they ever wake up, we just bring them out. So those are some of the basics of neuroimaging. What questions do you still have? Leave them in comments. Next time, I'll actually get inside the pretend scanner to show you a little more about what it's like to be a participant in an MRI study. And as always, thanks for watching.